time, Friday night, when a group of old broads get together to talk about their week in business. Hope you had a good one too. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Tiffy time. I'm Charlie. I'm Gail. And today we're going to have a few tiffies and talk about a couple of things that relate to our business. Excuse me while I have a drink. Ah, so good. Now, I will be honest, we have had a couple before we started recording. (laughs) She's going to kill me for saying that. But anyway, Um, so tonight uh, we wanted to have a chat about a couple of things, didn't we? I think the first one was uh, health and well-being Mm. because both you and I have been quite ill, which is why there hasn't been a recording for a couple of weeks because we've been quite ill. Um, And when I say quite ill, it's not enough to knock me out of working but it's enough to slow me down to a point that I'm like, I'm just getting through the day and getting through what I need to do before I crash and go to bed and get up the next morning and do the same thing. And as for yourself, Gail. I think it's the same thing, Charlie. And having the week I moved, I poured myself into bed like six o'clock most nights, didn't sleep particularly well, but dragged myself out of bed the next morning. And I guess it wasn't until probably two weeks that it was kind of like I am so sick of feeling sick so um and having gone to the doctors and having some CT scans and blood tests done and it's like well you have pneumonia yeah so I'm really sorry to hear that because pneumonia yeah. is the pits and it's really painful like you don't oh, understand just... how much pain you're in until you're no longer in that pain. It's just not being able to breathe and not being able to get enough air in and not and because you're not getting enough air, you're not sleeping properly, so you're waking up tired and it was just this constant thing. So I'm now on my second week of antibiotics and I feel like 500% better, like and really still, five. And you're still not 100% well. No, but I run out of antibiotics. Um tomorrow so you need another trip back to see how things are going um i've had 14 days of some really strong antibiotics and he's topped it up with um another week which finishes tomorrow so i'm really kind of hoping that after this lot finishes that i'll you don't relapse no and i but i think it's also about doing some other stuff and taking care of me rather than just working because i'm still starting at five in the morning And the phones are starting at 5.30, so you're, you know, like that time in the morning to journal and do what I thought I was going to do for me doesn't actually happen. And what time do you get, what time do you finish? Uh, 5 p.m. Yeah, so you've got 12 hour, 12 hour, 13 hour days, easy, Mm. easy. Yeah, and as for myself, I, I don't know what's wrong. I've just got a throat infection, which is sort of throat and sinus and ear and, I get over it for a couple of days and then it's back again. And yeah, I'm really damn tired. Just so, so tired. It's interesting you say that because when the CT scan came back, he said to me, you've had pneumonia and you've had it for a while. So I'm looking back and I'm thinking that I, through the chest infections I've had, that you take antibiotics, but it doesn't quite clear it up. And then you go a bit forget and, you know, like it's just this, recurring cycle so and unfortunately having pneumonia in the long runs does damage to your lungs so that's also really, something yeah. yeah it does so that's yeah. not good yeah so i went to my doctor the other way other day and i said as you said i'm sick of being sick i sick. really i just really want to be i want to feel better she'd actually given me some steroids and antibiotics the last time i went to see yeah. her and i felt so so good and four days later, my throat was sore again and my ear was sore again. And I, I yeah, you lay down overnight and it's just, ugh, it's just disgusting. You can't sleep properly. No. So no. I'm a, I don't know, maybe it'll, maybe she'll find something, but I'm going to keep writing her, well, writing her. I'm going to keep going back and seeing her until we can find what's wrong. Um, because this, this isn't normal. This isn't right. No. But. It's a really interesting uh, topic for us as business owners because our work doesn't stop. We've still got to manage that and we still have to get the work done 
and get the study done in your case uh. and look after ourselves. And how, how do you manage that? I've got to be saying, I've got to say, I'm thankful for you and Meg. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> there have been times it's like, I, I just can't deal with this. Just, you know, handle the call, respond to the email. Um, yeah. I'll get to them when I can. I think it gets, like I found it's got really tricky. Like it's, so the first week that I was in here at 5 p.m. I was logging off pajamas on pouring myself into bed and I was asleep by 6 30. And um, what time are we waking? Because you said you're 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 online at 5 30, yeah. So I was so I was trying to get back into the habit of getting up at four and studying and um that's still not happened. So my studies have fallen quite behind through this time because work You'll is money. Yeah. You'll pick them up. So, um, but I'm back to getting up. So this week I've got up at half past four every morning. I'm through the shower. I'm making my coffee. I'm at my desk. Um, so we're starting, obviously starting to feel really, really good about it. But it's it's just difficult. It's just like there is no one to pick up the helm. If you the phones ring, you need to answer. You need to sort the problem. Otherwise, you don't yeah. get paid. And if you don't get paid, the rent doesn't get paid. Yeah, and you need to and and you need to be able to talk to the people that you're working with to say, yeah. hey, I'm really slow. Can you pick up the slack? And you know, I'm, I'm happy to do that because I know that that comes back in the long run. But if you don't have those people in your business, what the hell do you do? I, I remember running my own um, bricks and mortar business, and yeah, you know, I was the one that did all the payroll. I was the one that did all the accounts yeah. at the end of the week. Um, I did all the rostering, <laughs> I did all the ordering and then you know, I'd go in and I'd do my shifts so because it was my business, I'd be the one that did the 40 to 50 hours a week on hey. shift and have my casuals and my temps come in to, to fill in the extra shifts. And um, I ended up with pneumonia <laughs> as a result of that. And I went into to the shop one day and I sat in the back and I remember sitting at the desk, much like I'm sitting here, and I put my hands in my head and I'm like, I can't breathe, I can't move, I'm in so much pain. And one of my young girls came out, she would have been 19, and she said, I'm taking you home. I've rung someone, they're coming in, I've rung one of the others, they're coming in, they'll take your shift, you're going home to bed. That was a 19-year-old that had to tell me, a grown woman with young children, that I shouldn't be working. That is such a bad place to be. But I think, Charlie, when you think about it, it's the worst work ethic we've been brought up with. And I've I've actually gone to work for paid positions where you, I'm as sick as a dog, but I'm going to work because that's what you do. Yeah, but I, yeah. But you know, like, and it wasn't until maybe five, six years ago that it became really quite um, prevalent at work that people would say, "You are sick. Don't come to work. Don't spread your germs." Oh yeah. You, that, well, hang on a tick. I'm oh, actually no. You don't do your best work. You're not. You deal with clients. You're not giving them a hundred percent. Go home. Get better and come back. But that's not the work ethic we were brought up with. It absolutely is not. And now that sort of translates into our own businesses because yeah. if we're not working, we don't make the money. Yeah. If we don't make the money, we don't eat. Quite literally. Yeah, no. So it's Very nice so. to have it's nice to have the backup. I've got yep. to say thank you to you and Meg for the backup. More than welcome. Um I've also got to make sure I say thank you to my dad <laughs> because he's been fantastic through all of this in terms of you just need to slow down and it's fine. Like I was walking three to four kilometers yeah. a morning and I haven't I just haven't I just don't have the energy and I know that I need to I know I need to be out walking but doing it that way is hard work and it's just likely to make me relapse so anyway that's why we haven't had a couple of episodes um and I'd really be interested to hear what our listeners kind of think and what what they do when that happens to them I'm assuming that some of our listeners are actually business people <laughs> and they're stuck because, you know, what do you do? How do you handle it? But when you go into business, you don't actually make a plan for backup. 
You should though, right? We have plans for exiting my business. I have plans for what happens when this happens, but there are no plans for what happens if I get sick. That's exactly right. So, yeah, so, you know, um, what is it you do when you're ill and, and you can't work? I guess because you work from home, it is, it's really easy to take some shortcuts, like who knows if I'm in my pyjamas. I, can, I, really, I really can sit here and drink coffee and lots of water and um, work for a couple of hours and, and take an hour off. And, and that's... But, but that's not such a bad... Right, that's not such a bad thing, right? I mean, in, in the scheme of things, you talk about you know, our work ethic and that, that's not such a bad thing. We can do it. The problem is, as I see it, is that working in your pyjamas doesn't actually set that boundary between going to work and having me time or having personal time. And it's something that I've been working really hard on for the last, oh, God knows how many years now that, okay, I'm at work, I'm getting dressed, I've gone and sat in front of my computer and I will actually say to my dad, I'm going to work now. Um, because it gives you that that distinct break between I'm I'm on my time and I'm on work time. Um, the other thing that I find is that it's not giving you time to recover. No. You are still working. Your brain is still going. You're, and I'm not going to say you shouldn't do it, but you, you kind of need to be a little cognizant of the fact that maybe once you start to get a bit foggy, you just need to go and, I don't know, turn on the TV and sit and watch the soap or the movie or the midday movie. <gasps> I'm showing my age. <laughs> or curl up and listen to an audio book for an hour or something <laughs> and just wind down. Yeah. But yeah. you're right. And, um, and, I and, think and that, that kind of brings, sorry, just that kind of brings then to, you also need to be honest with your clients. Your clients know that you are a small business. Your client knows that you are the front for your business. And when I go back and I say to my clients, look, I'm really not feeling well at the moment. I'll do what I can, but I'm going to be slow. The response I get is go and get yourself well. We need you well. Yep. And we're prepared to wait a little bit. Or in some cases, I'll get that this is really urgent. Could you please look at it? Mm. And when I get those kind of responses, I'm like, yeah, of course I can. Absolutely. And if I can't, then I'll tell you. But you've got to be honest, not only with yourself, and honestly, being on, honestly, haha, being honest with yourself is a really hard thing. Um, I've actually found it easier being honest with my clients. I do too. <laughs> you know, like on, on, on several occasions, it's like take the time you need, and then then come back to me when you're well. And it's like, well, actually, I'm I'm okay. I just need to go to the doctors, and I just need to do this. But it's and I'm going to be a little slow because I'm yeah. really not feeling great. And but people, I, I under, think, people understand it's like, what can you do? How how long can you give me? Do you know, like leave the phones, answer them all Monday? Do you know like it's yeah yeah? Or I just actually take find messages or yeah find the people that I work for are very generous in how I feel, very concerned. So and and I guess I'm lucky with that because I. We have a good working relationship, and it's really nice when they say, "You know what? Go to bed." So that that comes down to, I think, you do a good job for them. You are genuine in what you do for them. You are honest, and as soon as you reach that level of honesty for themselves, they go, "It's fine. You do such a good job for us. We know that you're not always going to be on board. We can we can cope for a day or so." And I remember when I was, must have been, I don't know, maybe eight weeks ago and I was really quite sick and I'd picked up a bug and I was all sorts of things. And I remember one of my clients who rang and it was like, no, I've not got out of bed. And he just kind of went, stay there. And that was it. That was the end of the conversation. And it was like, oh, okay. 
But it yes. was so it was so nice just to have. I don't know, it's not that you needed permission, but it was it's so the nice. Val- it's the validation. Yeah. Stay there. Oh, you don't want me doing it? No, nope, stay there. Okay, I'm going to stay here. Yeah. And, and, and that comes back to, like I said, I, you know, I've really got to thank my dad too because he's been really good because I've not been great. No, you've not been well for a while. Since January, beginning of January. Like, what are we, the 24th of February, and I have been sick since the beginning of January. That's a long time. And when I say sick, it's not like I've been deathly ill. It's like I'm just not you, firing on all cylinders. But you're not cylinders. well. I'm not firing on all cylinders. And no. There are times I, I'm just going to go and lay down now for a couple of hours. Yep. And do what I need to do when I can. So it, it's a, just an interesting thing, and I'd really love to hear what our, our listeners um, do and how they cope and what they think, because I'm pretty much certain we're not Robinson Crusoe on this. No. <laughs> Caruso. Robinson Caruso on this. <laughs> no, no, it was Robinson Crusoe. That's right, yeah. And now you are showing your age, because that oh, saying is so old. I am, but we all know I'm old. <laughs> So, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, you could look after yourselves in business. And, um, and well, my dad has two sayings, actually. I, I refer to him a lot, don't I? But he's got two sayings. Yeah, but- he says, are you working to live or are you living to work? I kind of like that saying because there are times in my life that I actually work to live. But there's times that I actually live to work. And as I said to him, I said, I love what I do. He says, that's yeah. fine. But are you working to live or are you living to work? You can love what you do. But is that all you do? Some weeks, it is. Yeah, sure. But ultimately, that's because we're working to live. So I we guess can it's... enjoy our lives. I don't want to be working until I'm 80. <laughs> I might be working oh. when I'm 80, but if I am working when I'm 80, it's because I want to. Exactly. And I like and I like to think now that I've moved closer to Megan and, and we quite often wander down to the beach with all the grandchildren on, on a, on I'm a so Saturday. I'm so jealous. I'm I so know, jealous. so <laughs> nice. Well, and, but you pick the phones up for me because it's really tricky to answer the phones when you're in the water. But that's what, that's what we do. And that's what yeah. I said I'd do for you. Like I yeah. said, I'd back you up. And it's lovely because, uh, like I'm teaching Gracie to swim, I'm, actually, I'm teaching Gracie to float. I can't get my head around being 10 and not being able to swim or float. Oh, right. No, I, <laughs> I'm such a water baby. <laughs> and they are too, but they don't have the confidence that... Um, but they weren't in the water from the time yeah, we were. No. Yeah. And so it's, just really, the, it's really different, isn't it? Oh, Charlie, you'd have, you'd have laughed. And so I said to her, hand me the boogie board and I showed her exactly how you get on the board. And it's like, I've not been on a board for, I don't know, 15 years. Oh, and the whole body just goes, this is what we do and this is how we float. And it was just so nice. But as I said to her, it was just like you just put your head down and you have a snooze and you wait to the wave. And it's like this whole thing that you've done all your life, I guess. And Grace is looking. it's, It's muscle memory. I know. And Grace is saying, why don't you fall off? Well, because I don't. I don't ever fall off. Because I'm laying on it and this is I what know. I do. But it was just so it was just so nice and so funny. So I have so enjoyed heading to the beach with the grandbabies and just I, I'm, I I'm, I'm jealous. I know. My I, my only grandbaby is back in Canberra. Oh um, maybe one day I'll have more grandbabies. I doubt it. I'm so ready. As I said to my dad, I'm so ready to be a grandma. I'm going to hype them up on preservatives and sugar no. and hand them back to their parents. <laughs> no. So when, I, so when I do the shopping, we, we always buy a um, French onion dip and cucumbers and carrots so we can slice it all up. And, and take it to the beach. I know. Oh. <gasps> I'm so envious. What, I what did Katie say? But you is, are such a grandma. It's like, oh, yeah. 
but you know, I mean, this is the point, right? You're you're working to live. You're not living to work. I am now, but it's been it's been a twelve month. It takes more. it's it's a really really big mentality change. Now the other thing my dad says, and he does it because you know my dad's a bit of a tease. He says, "So, are you the manager in your business? Are you managing yourself properly?" Are you making the proper management decisions? I hate I hate it when he does that because it's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm working too hard. I should say now it's time to finish up and just finish up. Yes, yes you should. You are managing your business. And he's not yeah. wrong. He no, is absolutely not wrong. And I'd like to walk out of the business at 3 p.m. and go, Now's my t- my study time, or now I'm going to do some yoga or some stretching. But three pm comes, and there's all these problems, and you're kind of like, oh, I need to solve them. Yeah. So I've actually found it's like, okay, so I'm going to do this one thing. Actually, that's a really good one, Gail, because um, I've actually found that recently because I haven't really been feeling well. It's like, okay, I've got all these things I need to finish off. One thing. Choose one thing. Get it done. Is that done? Yep. Close the computer down. Walk away. Go and get yourself a drink. Go for a walk around. In my case, walk around the golf course. Go and play with the dog. <laughs> Go and do your I yoga. Am, yeah, I'm five minutes from a beach. So I'm five minutes from three beaches. Oh, I know. Now and I'm I jealous. And I love the beach. I love the just standing in there, the, the salt water over my feet just makes the whole day worth it. And, and sitting on the beach and reading my book or meditating or do you know, like just doing stuff. And it's just like, here I am sitting and at five o'clock, I'm still solving problems. And I just kind of think, oh, no, it's got to. I... So you start at five, you should finish at three. Yeah. And I, I'm going to keep saying this. You should finish at three. You should say, that's it. I'm done. I if I studied for the day, I studied from three till four, and then went. You know what? I'm going to the beach. Shut your computer off. Go for a walk to the beach. Yeah, yeah. go and do that. It's really important. And I, again, I think our health would be much better if we did mm. that. Mm. <laughs> mm. I, you know, I, I, I actually went out the other day. I said, oh, it was um, five thirty, I think. Yeah, five thirty. I'm so tired. I'm going to go to bed. I'm just going to go to bed. Anyway, so I I got changed and I went to bed and I laid there and I, I actually dozed for like an hour. Was up at seven. Went and sat out and watched TV with him and I was cold. I'd actually got myself chilled. I mean, I know. Yeah, I'm in Finals Queensland. You do get cold in Finals Queensland occasionally, but I had got myself so cold that I was so tired I couldn't function. Yeah. Once I warmed myself up and had a bit of a snooze, I was fine. I was up until uh, 9.30, 10. Yeah. Then I went to bed and got a decent night's sleep. <laughs> Go figure. Yeah, I, I, you've just got to be aware of where, where your body's at and where your health is at. But, um, yeah, if you're listening to this and, and you've got some insight, I'd love to hear it. I, I really would. I'm sure Gail would too. Yeah. I'd love to hear how you handle it and what you do. Um, so that, that kind of brings me to my next one, and I'm going to put Gail in the spotlight here because she has imposter syndrome. Upping your rates. Oh, it's so tricky. Tell I me find it so difficult. Me. Tell me what you told me. So I have my letter. So I've talked about raising my rates, and I um, – I've got my letter all written, ready to go to people. And I look at it, then I go, oh, no, I can't do that. Why not? Well, because because maybe I can't do that. And it's just like maybe people won't take my rates and maybe. So let me ask you, if you have someone come along and you look at your new rate and they say, I don't want to pay that, is that a client you really want? Um, honestly, I have a couple of clients that I don't think will be able to, I don't think will go with it. And I guess 
I enjoy working for them and I don't want to lose them. So what are your options for them? Keeping them at the rate that I do now. Or tell them that they have to pre-purchase hours to keep you at the rate you're at? Yeah, yep. Or guarantee you a certain number of hours a week to get the rate you're at? Yeah. It's something I really struggle with. I really struggle with putting my rate up. And although part of me knows my value and part of me knows that I give good value for money, there is still that part of me that really struggles with putting my rate up. So you're not you're not alone. I won't use that term that I used before. <laughs> you aren't alone. Um, no. It's something I struggle with. Well, no, not anymore, actually. Um, and that's because I'm so used to going through and doing my rate update. Uh, I don't do it every year because my rates are people who know what my rates are. My rates are high. Um, if I just talk about my hourly rate, my hourly rate is high because I have so many overheads that I need to cover that if you only want to use me for an hour, it's going to cost you to use me for an hour. If you want to come on as a package client, I've got some great packages for you. And there's there it is in a nutshell, right there what I've said. I know what my worth is. I know what my expenses are. I know what I need to cover. Um, and if you don't want to pay that rate, then you probably aren't the right client for me. Yeah. That doesn't mean to say I don't like you any less. It doesn't mean to say that um, I think less of you. It's just the moons haven't aligned. The stars aren't aren't in alignment. Um, I think it's just difficult when you know that I have a couple of clients I work for a very um, – I'm sure their businesses are ticking along – Actually, they're probably not ticking along as nicely as we would like them to. So, and I think I just find that really hard. To, and you to really actually, want to help them, right? I do. And I enjoy helping them and I enjoy the conversations that we have. And I, I guess I'm really lucky because everyone I work for, I genuinely like. So um, in my experience, I actually, I, I did have that. And there was... Um, one client that I can actually think of like it, it's the one that that comes to mind um and when my rates were 145 dollars an hour I was charging them 44 an hour but what I found because initially they were one of my first clients um and I was eternally grateful to them for giving me the option and giving me the opportunity to earn that money. And when I first started working for them, they were giving me 10 hours a month. Mm. Uh, no, a week. I might have been a month. I don't know. They were giving me 10 hours. So, you know, it was 400 bucks. Yeah. When I, when I first started, and we're talking 2017 here, there was a lot of money for someone who had just started out and didn't have any runs on the board. Um. But we got, you know, we were oh, five, six, seven years down the track and I was still charging them that rate and they were giving me two hours a month. Mm. And I said, I'm sorry, I cannot afford to do this with you anymore. Your rate is now this. And I started invoicing them that rate. They were with me for another three years at that rate because I knew their business. I knew their business inside out. I knew what they were doing and they could come to me and say, what are we doing? Like, this is where we're at. This is what's happening. This is, there's two hours of my time. And I went from, you know, $400 a month at $44 an hour to two hours a month at 145 It was still less for them and they were getting far more value out of me than they had ever been getting. Eventually we parted ways. Not uh, angrily or uh, unfriendly. It, it, we just, she, she, they couldn't deal with me anymore. 
like no, sorry they they didn't need me anymore to do what I was doing and I'd found other work to fill the gap mm. so my offer to you is give me the email give me access to your email and I'll send it out for you <laughs> oh thank you Charlie <laughs> sometimes that's what you need right <laughs> it is it is very much and I guess this is my first ever price rise um I'm still charging everyone the same price that I did when I started in March last year um I and we all... it's um nearly 12 months now I know 12 months in business I'm pretty impressed with that so, so um, exciting it is. Do you know, like it has been exciting. And I did a network meeting the other day with um, Sarah Thompson. She's a WA woman who online social butterfly. She's absolutely gorgeous. And I'm part of her um, biz academy. And it was really interesting to hear. So when we did the network meeting and it was saying, I've almost been in business 12 months. And it was really interesting when people said, I've known BAs who have been in business five years and don't have the clients that you have. And that was really like, like you walk, I walked out of that thinking, oh, we're doing okay. We are actually doing okay. You are so, doing better than okay, my dear. You are absolutely doing better than okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am. I, I, I keep thinking back to the day that you responded to my oh. request for help oh. and we we connected and I said oh yeah look I, and my whole thoughts were I, I'll give you a go it's fine and if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out and, the, and and I think this is something I really want to highlight um is that when someone says I'll give you a go you say great thank you don't ever feel badly if it doesn't work out if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out you can still be friends you can still talk you can who knows down the track there may be something that does work out for you mm. but if that particular opportunity doesn't work out okay you're both better off for that that knowledge and that experience yeah, yeah. oh very much so and i guess and, I mean, it, for it, us it just worked out for us <laughs> It worked oh, out God, really well. It? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, yeah, yeah. I, I just I just love that there's someone that I can refer stuff through to. There's someone that if I'm really stuck and I'm really under the pump, I can send it through and say, hey, call this person or email this person yeah. for me and let them know that I'm working on it or I'm stuck or whatever is going on. Yeah. Um. And when they ring, you, know, you pick up my phone and you speak to them and then you message me and say, you stupid woman. <laughs> you don't. No, I don't. <laughs> but you can Charlie, Charlie I ass. am slightly confused. This person <laughs> thinks that you're supposed to be meeting now. But that's uh, not what my calendar says. <laughs> no, no. I shall go back to the calendar and check in future. Not your fault. Absolutely not your no, fault. <laughs> no. Um, but, you know. That, oh, man. Man, what a ride. Has it's it been great, been, hasn't it? Hasn't, hasn't it been, been fantastic? Orphan? Hasn't it been fantastic? And, I, you know, know. I look. I look when, you know, when you and I started, God, I was just surviving, honestly. Um, so I had registered. I, I had been deregistered. I, re I had deregistered myself for GST. I know. What were you thinking? Um, Oh, because I wasn't, honestly, I wasn't earning the amount. And why the hell would I want to be putting in bazzes if I wasn't earning the amount and paying someone to do my bass for me if I wasn't earning the amount? Um, but, you know, I'm registered for bass. I I, I, I pay income tax. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, I've actually earned enough in my business and personally that I had to pay tax. How exciting is it? I know it is. <laughs> so I don't would have think... thought you'd get excited about paying tax. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, but I like to know that I'm actually earning enough that I need to pay my bez and I need to pay my tax. And like it's only the 21st, 4th of Feb. So like I've not actually been back in Australia for 12 months yet. Oh, wow, well, I have. <laughs> yeah, you, you got back slightly just before me, but I think it's about the 7th or 8th of March, March. when I... Yeah. Yeah, flew yeah. in 
And it's just like, oh, just look at our. Look at where yeah. we're at. I know. Look, and, them. Yeah. look at where we're at. And, you know, here I am sitting up in far north Queensland. I never thought I'd move. Mm. Never, ever thought I'd move. No. Uh, but here I am. I'm sitting up in far north Queensland. I actually can label myself a digital nomad. Oh, you are. Oh. Um. And it's fantastic. Life is great. I mean, yes, I'm not well. <laughs> I haven't been well since January, but life is still pretty fantastic. I know. I, oh, it's great. I know. <laughs> and I've not, it's, and so in the 12, 12 months, I've not, well, it's not quite 12 months, been home, built a business, growing up and moved out of home again at 59. <laughs> um, hey, I moved back in at fifty-three, <laughs> and that's that's pretty exciting. So, you know, like, I I guess where I've been. So, this is the first time I've lived on my own since two thousand and seventeen. Wow! Yeah, because you yeah, had so, group houses before that, didn't you? Yep. So I left Collie in two thousand and seventeen, moved to Perth, um, shared with my folks for a little while, and then with my friend, and then I found a group house to share with. Then went to Canada for two years. Um, went to the UK for six months, came home, lived with my mum. And so here I am now back out on my own again, <laughs> buying peelers because I don't have, well. How I'm, exciting is that? I, you know, I got so excited when I bought my um, decor mixing bowls. I know. Don't judge, don't judge me. Oh, oh, <laughs> and, and, and I have, I have my own. <laughs> So I I now own a um oh what's my big cook pot my instant pot instant pot your instant pot I, so I bought the newest instant pot that has the air fryer on it I've got to get my real... air fryer lid I have to get my air fryer you lid do, to go on mine you actually do so and I was talking to my um, daughter in law the other day so I have left a um, instant pot in Canada with my um, with Brad's your in-laws, your in-laws. No, with, no yep. Brad, Brad's well, daughter's got it. Morgan's got it. Not your and in-laws. I, no, she's my step daughter. Daughter-in-law. No, she no no. She's oh, my she's daughter. Oh, she's stepdaughter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, she's my yeah. she's my daughter. I love my dad. I love, I'm an idiot. Yeah, Sorry. No, it's, like, do you know, like I just have all these kids, and it's just so lovely, and and Morgan's just absolutely gorgeous, and so is Dylan. Um, so she has my instant fryer my instant pot over there and then when I went to the UK because one can't live without an instant pot I bought another one so Tell I've left about that, it <laughs> I've left that with Danielle and now I live in my own place and I have my own instant pot so I know I know when I bought mine it was like oh I'm such a big girl now oh, okay. um and I said I, mixing bowls. I meant Pyrex mixing bowls like mm. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have thought that I'd moved out, that I'd run away from home, as I tell my kids. <laughs> uh, and if I think about it, I haven't lived on my own ever. Ever. Oh. I, I moved out of home. I moved in with my ex. Well, who's my boyfriend at the time. He's now my ex. Um. I lived with him. I had kids. I moved into my, moved into an apartment, uh, a studio with my son. Then I moved into my daughter's house, and then I lived in Hawaii <laughs> with friends. And then I came back and lived in my daughter's house, and now I live with my dad. <laughs> it's okay. I'm probably not meant to live alone. <laughs> no, and yeah. But it's not like I have I'm not independent. It's not like I don't have my own things no. to do. Um but this is pretty cool. This is this is probably mm. the best it's ever been. How cool is that? That's very cool. So yeah, so apart from, you know, I'm still not goddamn well. <laughs> no, but we I'll get there. I'll get there. And I've got enough sense about me to say I'm not well and I need to be. So make me better now. And we have access to good doctors and medications. and But I guess my point behind all of that is that we are still quite lucky and I still can't afford to go to the doctors. And, 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 I'm just thankful, and I'm just thankful I can keep working and, you know, yeah. I can do what I, 
I can do what I love doing and I don't have to worry. Well, you know, I work for myself. And as the saying goes, you work for yourself. You've got a bitch of a boss and a shit of an employee. I know. <laughs> but you know what? I, I, I'm learning to love who I am. I'm learning to love the person I'm becoming. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that a nice thing? It is. Well, I think that's all we needed to discuss. And I have, it's so sad. I'm empty. <laughs> so um, I'm going to invite people, please leave some comments. Let yeah. us know what you're thinking. What do you think about, you know, your health and working for yourself? And what do you do when you're sick and you, you just can't cope? Um what do you do when you want to raise your rates and you're like, oh, I've got imposter oh, syndrome. I can't, oh, I can't possibly so do that. How do you handle that? Uh, and also, please remember, like this episode, subscribe to our channel and hit that little notification bell so that you get notifications when we post our next content. For, the, for now, though, that's the end of Tiffy time. I'm out of my Tiffy. And I think thank Gail you is out of hers. For sharing Friday evenings with us again. Absolutely. We do enjoy this time and we are sorry we were absent for a little while. See you later, guys. And that brings us to the end of Tiffy Time for the week. We hope you've enjoyed the episode and we hope you join us next week. See you later, guys.